Hello, welcome back to another episode of Times Radical. Fabio here. So today I have this 5512 no date sub vintage uh, Rolex Submariner no date with the four lines of script here. These were um, chronometer certified. And let's see if we can see that. And yes, so this is in fact a 5512. You can barely see the model number there. And it has just been serviced. Watch has been waterproofed and I'm just finishing some things up. You can look at that dial. That <laughs> patina is just wild. Maybe we can get some better light on it here. Please excuse the glare. So today in this video, I am showing you how you can set your watch to the second when you don't have a seconds hack. This is a super old Rolex. Uh, they did not use the seconds hacking function on the watch. So if you want to set the watch to the seconds, for a watch like this without the seconds hack, I mean, you can see you get into the, set, the setting position and the seconds hand is moving. But you know when the seconds hand is not moving is when you turn the hand backwards. Go very slowly and seconds hand stops. Immediately when we let go, the seconds hand keeps going. Now, why is that? So if you'd like to set the watch to the seconds, turn it back. That's how you would do it. But let's discuss why you do this and how come that works. So we can take the case back off. And in this case, you need to understand a little bit about the cannon pinion because that is what that is the clutch that's controlling the seconds hand. It's actually the clutch that's controlling all the hands when you set the watch. Set this aside. Cover it with the dome. So let's see if I can explain this in a way that's comprehensible. Because I don't do very many explanation videos, but I would like to start getting into more of a teaching aspect. So the power is all coming from here, the barrel. When you wind the watch, you're turning the crown, the stem is turning like that. It's rotating the sliding pinion, which rotates the winding pinion, which turns the crown wheel. Crown wheel turns the ratchet wheel. And that ratchet wheel winds up the spring that's inside the barrel. So the main spring is inside the barrel, winding up. Then when you let go, the ratchet wheel gets stopped from the ratchet there, from the click. 
and the mainspring starts unwinding. Now when the mainspring is unwinding, it has nowhere to go because it's fixed to the arbor that this screw is screwed into. And it starts unwinding and turning the teeth on this barrel. So if that makes sense, this barrel is turning and this barrel is turning, the teeth are connecting to this wheel here, which is the center wheel. Now that center wheel has a pinion on it that goes straight down through the movement and up to the dial side where you have the display. Now that center wheel pinion that goes through the dial side has a cannon pinion that is friction fit onto it. Now it's friction fit onto that pinion. So as that center wheel turns, that cannon pinion turns, the minute hand is actually pressed onto the cannon pinion. So that's directly tracking the minutes as the watch ticks and unwinds slowly. Then on top of the cannon pinion, um, to the side of the cannon pinion, there's a minute wheel, and on top of the cannon pinion is the hour wheel. So there you have the hour hand is pressed onto the hour wheel, the minute hand is pressed onto the cannon pinion, and the seconds hand is actually pressed onto this seconds pinion, which is being driven by this intermediate wheel, which is pressed onto the third wheel's pinion. So you have your barrel turning and unwinding. You have it directly connected to the center wheel, which is unwinding, which is driving the display, the hour and the minute hand. But the seconds wheel, that uh, the center wheel, excuse me, is connecting to this third wheel which pinion comes up through this gear train bridge and you have this intermediate wheel pressed onto the third wheel pinion, which is connecting to this seconds pinion here. And you can see that seconds pinion ticking along. So, when you go to set the hands, and you're moving them counterclockwise, you're essentially stopping the watch. because that cannon pinion tightness is just that medium tightness that you want. If the cannon pinion tightness is too loose, when that center wheel turns, it will slip and the watch will be running, but the hands won't track. If the cannon pinion tightness is too tight, when you go to wind or set, when you go to set the watch, you could be shredding some teeth on your display wheels and your setting wheels. So that's why cannon pinion tightness is important, and that's how you set your watch to the seconds if your watch does not have a seconds hack. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that was comprehensible. I'll be posting more of these videos where I talk about watch technical aspects.
So this is just the first of many. And you can see that this watch is super interesting. You can kind of see straight through the side of the dial here. But when you put the auto movement on and the case back on, it's a little harder to tell. Anyways, just an interesting watch, some thoughts, and some new video ideas. Hope you've been enjoying these videos and talk to you later. And remember, time's radical.